Welcome back, folks. The purpose of this video is to answer user comments on the previous magnetron videos that I recently put out, which include the one where I ran a magnetron output into a tin can with a hole punched in the bottom of the tin can, and where I was generating x-rays by putting 40,000 volts across a magnetron. Quick note of caution, the experiments I've been doing, including this one and previous ones, are extremely dangerous and should not be tried at home. On that note, buckle up, let's begin. Thanks for all your helpful comments on my last video on generation of x-rays using a magnetron. Some of the comments were real interesting and someone suggested that I had just removed the magnets, which I've just done. Here are the magnets. These are pretty strong ceramic magnets. So I'm gonna put these aside and I'm gonna see what the radiation production is. So I'm gonna apply 40,000 volts and we'll see what it does. There's a lot of radiation coming off the bat. It's at least three times the amount of radiation when the magnets were there. Actually, it's four times. The next thing I want to do was apply a small voltage to the filament, just enough to heat up the filament, but not to make it too hot to see what that does to the radiation levels. Okay, I'm going to apply filament current from a lithium ion battery. It's going to be about four volts, so it's going to be more than the normal operating voltage. But anyway, this is just to see of what it does to x-ray production. So I'm going to connect it up here. Okay, filament is on. Now we're going to turn the power on. Here it goes. Now let's see the x-rays. Not getting any x-rays with the filament running. Notice the reddish glow of the filament through the ceramic. Now let's turn the filament off. Filament is now disconnected. Now let's see what we're getting. Now while I have this probe over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the battery. Here it goes. Battery getting connected right now. As soon as the filament comes on, lose all x-ray production. Okay, what I've done now is I've just pulled off all of the cooling fins. They basically slide off. You just need to bend them up a little bit with a pair of pliers. Here's the last one. Let me get this one off. There we go. So now we have the magnetron without the fins and it's actually no longer a magnetron because the magnets have been removed so it's just a tube with a very high vacuum in it. Now we're going to um, apply voltage to this without any of the uh, cooling fins or the magnet and we're going to apply different polarities. So we're going to apply negative to the cathode and positive to the anode and then we're going to switch the polarities to see the effect on x-rays. Okay, right, it's all set up. I've connected it to the voltage multiplier, about to put 40,000 volts into it. Here it goes. Let's see what it's doing in terms of radiation. Oh my God. It's screaming with radiation. That's a lot. That's 20 times what I did, 30 times what I was getting on the initial experiment. Well, wow. all right, now we're gonna switch polarity and see if it still produces that much radiation. Okay, the polarity is now switched. So the 
the anode is getting the negative charge and the cathode is getting the positive charge from the voltage multiplier. I'm gonna switch it on and we're gonna measure radiation production. Here it goes. Okay, it's on. Not seeing any radiation. So it's very directional in terms of how it needs to be powered as a cold cathode, nothing. Okay, let's turn it off. Now I'm gonna switch it back again. Okay, what I did is I um, put the polarity back the way it should be with negative on the cathode and positive on the anode. Let's fire it up and make sure it's still producing that much radiation. Here goes. I'm doing this behind a metal shield. This much radiation is enough to produce images. Here goes. That's 55 more times radiation than the initial experiment in my last video. And I have a feeling it's due to the absence of the magnets, but also the absence of the cooling fins, because these were likely blowing off a lot of corona and dropping the voltage. One thing I noticed is that the cathode, the filament in the cathode is actually glowing without even being powered. Check this out. You can see a glow through the pink ceramic. I'm going to turn it on right now. Here it goes. I'm going to interrupt this video quickly to answer another comment about running a magnetron right into a tin can. I got some comments on that. Several people commented that the can should have been at right angles to the output of the magnetron. Thanks to those who commented, especially Treasure Planet 9082. I redid the setup and added a can so it's at 90 degrees to the output of the magnetron. So this is what we have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside and run it to see if I can light up uh, a fluorescent bulb with the output of this. And to see if there's any flame formation. With the, connect, with the can, uh, with the hole drilled in the bottom of the can, in my earlier video, um, a big flame was coming right out of the uh, magnetron, and it was likely damaging the magnetron. Treasure Planet 9082 very helpfully suggested that the uh, output of the magnetron should be three centimeters or quarter wavelength from the closed end of the can. I'm gonna turn it on right now. Now for another quick run. Well, there you go, and it works, so that proves it. And thank you for suggesting that um, in the comment section. That was a great suggestion, and I think this is gonna work better now. Well, with that quick side experiment to answer some of the user comments, I'm back to this and I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank everyone for the helpful comments, which helped me to put this last final video together on this series on the magnetron.